Okay, this video is going to focus on a question. Do family lawyers apply a victim template onto situations? And I'm going to explain what I mean by that question and then give you some answers. I'm not legally trained, but I've worked in the family law area for many years as a McKenzie friend. And I'm very good at observing patterns that happen. And um, I've had many people that have come to me after going to solicitors and um, I kind of know the patterns and the scripts that go on. And one thing that I would observe does appear to happen, that family lawyers um, can make an awful lot of money with um, their female client placing and positioning themselves as a victim because it can mean extended court hearings that uh, require a lot of paperwork um, that create a situation of emotional dependency with their uh, female client who is um, maybe on multiple different levels or different types of court cases trying to achieve quite acute extreme uh, measures. So they may, their client may not be operating in a way which is particularly long-term focus in a positive sense with regards to child arrangements. It might be a very much division piece that one person is trying to control the situation and cut the other parent out of the children's lives by making allegations. And sometimes those female clients have walked into a solicitor's office and didn't consider themselves a victim of domestic abuse but they walk out thinking that they are and all of a sudden the whole case is getting focused in a far more acutely um, conflict um, based position which then can mean um, a massive seismic ripples into the family that mean that there's all sorts of things allegations can be made finding of fact cases can be had um, divorce uh, finances cases can get um, sort of influenced to be uh, biased in certain ways. Child maintenance claims can go up because one parent's not be, um, seeing the children. Um, and right at the heart of it all, you can have damaged children not seeing um, their parent. Now, uh, I'm not in any way by making these observations saying that domestic abuse doesn't happen, but also I'm making an observation that domestic abuse happens on many different ways. It can be female to male and male to female, and there's, um, you know, that's uh, out there on the stats that it does happen in both directions. And so I'm very much a positive thinking parent who likes to reduce conflict and to try and think about how people can co-parent in the long run so that children have relationships with both parents and so that they're not affected when they have future relationships of themselves with men or women. That's kind of where my heart is and that's what I think is really important and sometimes that's tough to work through but that's always in the back of my head of how I'm trying to help people and I think uh, what I've seen is that family lawyers can have somebody come into their room and they can go right I'm going to fit this female client into a template the template is one that that works and brings in a lot of income for the practice because it might involve non-molestation orders it might involve occupation orders it might involve divorce finance cases and also child arrangements cases so that's four types of hearings and the cash register can be running, running up. And they quite skilled at feeding into negative emotions about the breakup that can kind of spur on the person to perhaps be more angry, to be more spiteful and to be more divisive and not to be thinking about working together as parents. And obviously uh, legal aid could be involved so that person may get some of this legal help on a reduced basis. But for me, as somebody who looks at it from a heart perspective, I really think of the children at the heart of it and what's this going to do to them long term. Um, so this is something that is, seems to be a template that I see applied. Um, and what seems to happen is whilst the solicitor or lawyer may be trying to fit what they're told into this template that somebody's a victim, they're, they're quite often not asking the questions to the person who's making the allegations of how did you behave towards the other person. So they might not ask them whether or not they've been verbally abusive to the, the father, whether they've been physically abusive, whether they've been controlling, etc, etc. So they're not gathering at that stage a full position because it's not really in their interest because 
um, it may well then influence how they would um, work with that client. And so these are some of the things that I've seen happening as repeating patterns, not exclusively all the time, but it's something that does seem to be um, a template approach, you know, you're fit, um, and then when you go to courts, courts and judges and magistrates are very familiar with the template of what goes on. And ultimately, it's a social worker's job to then critically analyse whether or not the situation that they've been presented with fits that. Is the father domestically abusive? Or is there, was there a disharmonious relationship that went in both directions? And sometimes what I would observe is that some fathers, when they're accused with things, they freeze, they get stuck in the headlines, and they don't know quite how to speak up for themselves to articulate their version of the disharmonious relationship when it was breaking down and they may have normalized certain types of conduct that they were experiencing just because they thought that that was typical of a, of a woman in a relationship and that was something that came from their parenting history whatever there's all sorts of ways but I just sort of, sort of share this so that you can understand that sometimes what courts are looking for to assess and somehow in, in which way I could help you. If you're faced with a situation where a template's been um, enforced onto your situation, it may well be that we could have a healthy conversation about problem solving, thinking about this, uh, and uh, if you don't feel that any allegations against you are justified and you feel that this template's been forced upon you and your ex-partner and you're trying to think long term about how to improve it and get to a better place, then you may well be somebody um, I could help because uh, I'm really passionate about helping people improve their co-parenting situations in the short term and the long term. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea. You can reply in the comments box below to say if you think that this is true, that you've experienced templates being applied, or whether you think that's an unfair um, assessment of the situation. But yeah, it's sending this with love in my heart. Hope you think it's a, an interesting sort of observation. And uh, take care and keep strong. Bye.